We want to take just a moment to explain something to you that on the surface would seem relatively simple, but it's complicated on this uh, engine by the, the sheer height of the truck, and that's the, the safest way to uh, get in the truck and the safest way to get out. As you'll notice here, you have a bottom step. Now, this is a flexible swing step. You need to keep that in mind. But you also have a grab handle here, one here, and one up here. <clears throat> when you start to get in the truck, simply put your foot nearest the front of the, the uh, truck on the step, grab a handle, and swing yourself up to this step right here. And then you can step on in the truck. When you get out, you just reverse that order. Swing around, make sure, always make sure you have a good hold on a grab handle. Step down with your left foot, catch that step, and then onto the ground. Uh, until you get accustomed to getting in and out of this truck, you need to concentrate on that because if you miss a step, it's a long way to the ground. I'm sitting in the driver's seat of uh, engine 1506. I'll go over a lot of the instrumentation on the panel with you on the on the dashboard. Uh, there will be some of you who are trained to drive this uh, engine, so at that time you'll receive additional training. But if we start over here on the left of the dash, here's all the touch button uh, controls for your transmission. Uh, it has a drive, reverse, etc. Like I said, if we if you're chosen as a driver for this truck you'll get all of that detail. As a normal instrumentation uh, your uh, speedometer uh, two gauges here for air pressure because it does have air brakes it has an analog braking system. Uh, your fuel gauge, uh, oil pressure and then over here it has uh, two ammeters one for uh, 12 volt and one for 24 volt. Here is your your panel for your headlights, all your auxiliary lights, your clearance lights, etc. And uh, that's another thing that will be explained to you if you're chosen to drive this unit. Uh, I didn't mention to you when I was giving you an overall look at the truck that this truck uh, has a compression brake. Uh, or an engine brake, uh, often referred to uh, by truckers as a jake brake. And this is a brake that helps slow you down when you're slowing down to a stop. And uh, most of you have heard these on uh, semis. They make a lot of noise when they're, they're slowing down for a stop. Uh, also your switch is here and your starter button, etc. Here is your brake release for your parking brake. Uh, when you get ready to roll, you simply push that in and it releases your parking brake. We also talked about the central tire inflation system that you can lower and, and reinflate the tires on the truck. Here's your control uh, module for that. You have uh, one for highway use, you have one for off-road use, uh, there's even one for running flat. So. Uh, those will be things that we may use the uh, highway button and the off-road that that will probably be about it up here we have uh, <clears throat> your switch for the PTO as we mentioned when we were back at the pump panel that we have two switches for that the driver has to have the truck in idle before he flips on this enable switch when he does that then he turns it over to the pump panel operator. He can turn on the pump when he chooses. This is, uh, if you have both door clo doors closed, this simply turns on the interior lights. This is the other end of that intercom system that we pointed out back on the panel. The uh, driver can simply pick this up and talk to the, the uh, pump panel operator or the, the fireman back on the, the deck. This is your tank gauge. Now this is a smaller version of what we, we see back on the 
the pump panel and at the rear of the truck where our fuel inlet is. <clears throat> this is your two-way radio and the mic for it. And this is the control box for uh, all of your uh, emergency lights, uh, your uh, sirens, uh, your horn, uh, your PA system. You can, you do have a public address system or a loudspeaker on this. Uh, one thing that we did do on the emergency lights, <clears throat> and this was strictly from a practical, practical standpoint, this is a switch right here that turns on your emergency lights. If you put it in the first position, it simply turns on the emergency lights on top of the cab. If you go to the second position, that's the cab and the uh, emergency lights, uh, or the it's the top of the, the cab and all the emergency lights on the front and side of the cab. If you go to the third position, it's all the strobe lights on the truck. All the ones on the back, the front, and on the top. <clears throat> the reason we did it that way, a lot of times if, you, if you're in a stationary situation on a structure fire, acting as a pumper, You'll want to turn off the strobe lights back on the back of the truck because they're blinding when you're trying to work around the truck. So you'd simply flip that back to the second position and it'd turn those off back there. Or if you decide you don't want those on on the side of the cab and the front of the cab, come back to the next position and then that turns them all off. There is some storage behind the seats here that you probably can't see with the angle that Jerry's shooting. This truck is set up to carry three people, uh, a driver, one in the passenger seat, and then we'll have a jump seat here that, that he's uh, sitting by.